still working with some really nice properties. 59 Club Asia set up in November last year, uh, and obviously some people in the room are already working with us, which is brilliant. Uh, 59 Club USA set up in March this year, uh, and since then signed up all the TPC golf courses and all the kind of Bobby Jones links. So there's definitely a presence now where we can start offering some information based on potentially what is going on culturally around the globe, which is really important for us to deliver. If we were just a little bit UK based, I would sit in front of you today and you'd go, yeah, but that's what happens over in Wales, Matt. Or that's what happens in the Midlands. <coughs> and I am from the Midlands, by the way, just in case you didn't quite get that. So, uh, I, I, I got beaten at me at a very young age, so. Uh, right, so a couple of things I really want to kind of start with. Um, I guess it's, I can tell you all about us, and you might get a little bit bored, you might say, yeah, that's just a little bit of hearsay. So I wanted to start off with some feedback from people that we work with, and it's a bit of feedback from Chris May. Now, I've asked people, do I read this out, do I not read it out? So it's basically Chris telling us as a business that we've been paramount in the delivery of service to Dubai Golf. So you all probably know Chris from from Dubai Golf, I know he's been there for many, many years. And the bottom for me is a half bank our staff and 59 coming up for their commitment and achievements. We look forward to advancing our customer service experience further with our focus as always firmly fixed on service. So that's massive for us. That's a nice big player in our world of golf. So there's your first one for you. I've got a couple of 2018 Plenty of the Year for uh, Glen Eagles as well. Because we do have an award, and if you are good at what you do, we would love to recognise you in quality of uh, service that you deliver. Greg Patterson, linger for longer. Gentlemen, get up off your seats. That's as good as what I've got at the moment. He's actually, uh, he's actually in the Belfry, he flies in today, uh, and he's doing a bit of work for us on our training platform, which is the next thing that we're gonna deliver in January next year, which is basically, and it's really key for the PGA, and we're gonna do a bit of work for the PGA on this, that wherever you're based in the world, you should be able to log into a platform and give feedback, or you'd be able to, a bit, a bit like Netflix, let's say, you could choose some information delivered by some very key general managers or people in the industry or outside of the industry. We've just sold this technology to Liverpool Football Club. Now you might say, well, that's a bit of a waste of money. Some people in the room might. Uh, but ultimately, it is all about creating content for their coaches and their players. So. I might have been a football jargon, but I'm going to walk on, that's fine. Uh, so, Greg Patterson loves what we do. Massive fan of what we're doing. That for us is a massive endorsement. The buzz of the business. Has anyone not heard of Greg Patterson? Okay, Google him. Definitely Google him. Greg with three Gs. So, um, last one of these. So, Anna Darnell, who's Director of Golf and Leisure at The Grove. Uh, so we did some training with Anna. One of the biggest things that we work on now is the development of the people. When I worked at the Belfry for 18 years before I joined 59 Club, I used to get mission shot by this horrible company called 59 Club. And we used to get a set of results that basically says, you're not quite as good as what you think you are. Oh, rubbish. And you'd start looking at yourself, and I'm, I'm better than that, surely better than that. As a mystery shopper, we have no axe to grind. We are not trying to catch you out. We are giving you some feedback based on an experience that happened at your property. That's it. If we catch you on a bad day, we caught you on a bad day. Paul, who I played golf with, um, was talking about a golf professional that was at one of our properties. And he said, I was, I was there a couple of weeks ago, and the golf professional said, I just had that bloody 59 club, give me some feedback, and rah, 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 rah. And he's a miserable git. Not Paul, by the way, but the golf professor's a miserable git. He's been in situ for about 25 to 30 years. And I'm pretty sure if you asked every one of the members and members of staff, they'd probably say exactly the same thing. Our tester just said, he's a bit of a miserable git. In a constructive manner. So, um, and this is kind of, I feel like our little mantra. So ultimately, you've got to measure it. You've got to know what you're doing. And you've got to get someone to measure it's going to be objective. You need to know what people are saying or thinking about you, and you need to do it from an objective point of view. So you measure it. You take that feedback and you train. Whether you do it internally, whether you get an external trainer in, whether you ask us to do it, it doesn't matter. You train that person, you develop that team. <coughs> we support you with that if you wish. 
we'll go through what good looks like. We'll offer you some best practices from either people local to you, we're never going to mention any names, but we can say, look, this is working really well. Have you thought about doing this? Because we want golf to survive, we want it to win, we want it to be really successful. So if we can give you some of the ideas that people are using, we will do that. We want to make sure that what you guys do is the best we possibly can do. And you measure it again. Have you made any changes? Have you seen any improvement? Has the balance scorecard improved? Has it gone up a little bit? Have you even given yourself a measurement that that tee time ball that sits there at 67% now needs to be 75% for the whole of 2020? Do you incentivize any of your staff on it? If you measure it and you get a number for it, it is really easy to know what good looks like. So, and how do we do it? Mission shopping, as you just heard, surveys, anyone that has been to your property, you can ask some, some feedback based on a very kind of either subjective or objective way. That is a survey system we've got, My59, probably one of the most powerful tools that we have got as a business. If you want to run a survey on any single, any single area of your business, you can do it. There are other survey, survey companies out there, which is fine. They're quite rigid in what they do. I'm not going to sell one over the other, but if you're going to get feedback, please do so. And then do something with it. And any member's property that we work with, that is probably the most powerful tool they've got. And you can also, we've got a, a, a Golf Tell app in there as well, which you can utilize for feedback. John could use it for his tour, his course walks if you wanted to. You could set it up for Michael based on on, on a course walk as well. So you've got an app, you can physically walk around, you can take pictures, you can upload it, it goes straight onto your dashboard. It's a fixed fee, you can use it as much or as little as you want. So, and then the final thing is training. It's probably my biggest passion to sit in front of anyone or to stand in front of anyone to give someone the, the way to improve, how to develop them. It's, my, it's the thing I love most about my job at the Belfry. Operations, busy, busy golf course. Team, without them, nothing. Spend some time with them, develop them, create a little competency matrix of what you need to develop them on. But ultimately, training should be a massive part. Uh, we just had Claire Middleton that's just joined us that's covering now Scotland and <coughs> North. That is the piece of data that we collated in one product this year in our visitor experience or our members' guest experience. If you are a private members club and you need to understand that you are going to have guests that are going to walk into your property, they are, because every single visitor at some point, every single member at some point has probably been a visitor and might have been a guest of a member and they've gone, I quite like it here, I might join. How do you look after your guests? So, a lot of data, we've got shed loads of products to be fair, and if someone says, you get should I cover it all? If I was going to cover it all, I'd be here till tomorrow night. Now, some of you might still be in the room, you've probably fallen asleep, but in the whole grand scheme of things, if you want to know what we do in the products, I'm more than happy to share with you. So, seamless service. How do you use your data or oil? Oil, data, oil. Wait, it's in your oil. <laughs> <laughs> so, and who gets it? What do you do with it? I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> versus the mentality. What do you do with that information? So, I ring up and make a tea time booking. Someone says, and if they're good at what they do, yeah, absolutely no problem at all. And have you been here before? No, I haven't. All right, no problem at all. And they might give me information about what to do on site. They might even tell me what time the restaurant's open and potentially what time I can hit some golf balls on the driving range. That's if they're half decent and good at what they do. They, can, they might even take an email address and send me some written confirmation. Beautiful confirmation by Yvonne based on a, a, a hotel booking. Does any of you, or has any of you got that feel for your tea time reservation? Can you book a, um, a, a time in a restaurant or a table in a restaurant based on your confirmation? Or does it just say, dear Mr. Jones, tea time booked at 8.30 to Tuesday. Kind regards, Matt Golf Club. You see a lot of that, and that's if people send it. So, I book a tea time, someone says, have you been here before? No, I haven't been here before. Oh, brilliant, fantastic. I then arrive at the gate, and I'm greeted by a concierge or a bag drop. Good morning, sir. Have you played here before? No, I haven't. Oh, fantastic, well, welcome to the club. Really happy to have you on site. 
Um, just go in there and see Cornell, she's going to look after you this morning. Brilliant. I said, yeah. Good morning, sir. Have you been here before? No, I haven't been here before. Um, all right, lovely to have you on site. Really delighted you're here on site. Um, what do you fancy doing? Do you want to go and get some food or do you want to go and hit some golf balls on the driving range? Let's uh, go and do one of those things. And, and Paul, I obviously asked you for permission for this, but when I arrived uh, yesterday on Saturday, no one asked me if I'd been here before, actually. Never been here before, and I'm a little bit kind of the, the British polite mentality. So I'm not going to ask, I'll find my way. Because that's what generally kind of most, most blokes do anyway, isn't it? We find ourselves wandering around opening doors. Oh, that's the cloakroom. That's not where I'm looking for. But as a mentality, do you actually make sure that you're offering directions to your facilities? So, have you been here before? No, I haven't. Guess what? Get to the starter. And the starter says, good morning, sir. Have you been here before? No, I haven't. How do you use your data? I take it on that phone call and I go into my booking system and I book Mr. Davis, NBB. Gentleman arrives at the door. Good morning, sir. What time are you playing with us this morning? 10.30, is it Mr. Davis? Yes, it is. Mr. Davis, I see you've not been to the golf club before. We did like Are you a member? No, I'm not. Oh, who are you playing with? Mr. Shipley. Oh, right, okay, fine. Oh, um, does anyone even ask your members yes if they've been here before? What do you do with the people that are standing in front of you? How do you make them feel super welcome? Because sometimes I walk into a member golf club and I absolutely don't. Well, you can wait over there until your, until your, until your, until your host arrives. Thanks very much. <laughs> nice. But what do you do? NBB. So we, when we work with the golf club, I'm not. Gentle, I'll add this, but I'm not bothered if you get asked, have I been here before? Because at least I'm, I'm trying to understand, do you need any information? But if I've got the information, I've made a note of it, it's in your booking system, and I've got MVB, that makes you sound very professional indeed. Welcome to, I then might get something else. A regular visitor, welcome back. Love to have you back. It might be a hotel resident. It might be a potential client or potential member and you set up a meeting for them. And I walk to the door and someone says, can I help you? Yeah, I'm here to see uh, um, Mr. Davis about membership. Oh, is it Mr. Robert? Mr. Robert, it's lovely to have you on site. I know you've not been here before. Uh, Mr. Davis, I'll give him a call, but let's just sit you in here. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Yeah, that's nice. That is standard in my world. People struggle to do that. So information that gets passed down from, and it's actually his fault, if the staff don't know that I'm coming, because he's not let them know. But if, I, if the staff know I'm coming, great. And then it's like for you. It might be an owner. Do you know they're coming? Some people might just arrive. Who is that? Have you even got a picture of all your kind of owners in the bathroom? Kind of see someone rocks up and you actually know who they are. Morning, are you, are you playing golf today? I own the place. Mentality. So, what do you do? And this is the most important thing, you map it out. We did a piece of work at the golf club uh, by a, a, a yellow digger um, uh, contractor kind of site with three letters. You might be able to work that out. They've got a brand new country club. I set every single one of the members of the staff in the room and we mapped out the journey, which means the arrival staff knew exactly what the tea time staff said. And then when we got to the kind of the check-in process, we went through everything. The food and beverage guys knew exactly what was going on. They knew the journey completely. The rangers, the marshals, the starters, the course assistants, everybody. We spent five days mapping their journey out for them. And do you know what? They're really good at what they do. It's actually sometimes really hard to start it if you've already got, if you haven't got that in place. But if you know who's coming and your team know did a piece of work at, I think it was actually with, with Anna at the Grove, um, because they started to get people that were, um, let's say, walking away from information. It's because they were doubling up or trebling up in certain areas. Someone said, have you been here before? Do you know where the locker rooms are? Do you know where this was? No, I don't, I'm fine, thanks very much. And then they get to the next number of staff. Good morning, sir, do you know where the locker rooms are? And they shot, fine, thanks very much. And people started to walk away. Work out what your journey's gonna be. Know what each department says, 
and then deliver it and actually become really efficient and very relevant. Revenue generation that might come from higher items, you're not asking the question, you're missing out on a lot of money. So, let the chat, how do you make me feel welcome? I can give you eye contact, I can welcome, I can acknowledge you within 20 seconds, and I can say good morning. That's the basic. 62% off of the basics and nothing more than that. Only 38% of the time does someone say, where have you travelled from today? Got a good journey? Just a little bit of engagement. Soften it a little bit. Try to understand you a little bit more as a customer. So only 38% engage in conversation. And guess what? That's your first on-site experience. That is me arriving on site and someone going, yeah, morning, great, that way. How are you supposed to do it like a multilingual? I think it depends how much information you've taken to start with. If you've got a start sheet, and, and this is where, you know, I, I, I'm not from, uh, I, I've not travelled extensively at all, so this is where your experience will probably give me the information. So if you tell me that doesn't happen or it could never happen, absolutely fine. If you know most of your clients, um, I was talking to a, to a general manager that was trying to educate his team with at least kind of three or four different languages. Well, that's great maybe for the, the, the managers or supervisor or whatever, but when you get to someone which is just a concierge walking through the door, it may not be as easy. If you tell me, is it something that could be done or not? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's obvious why you should start from Malta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in China, I think it's challenging, right? So, okay. But the majority of your guests would be in our We're all four names on. A lot of times, people make a booking and it'll be Roberts times four, or Roberts times three, or whatever it'll be. And if I'm then looking, one of the biggest things that I used to struggle with is say, um, this is Matt's way, but I'll say, someone said, what time are you playing? Um, or, uh, or, can I just take a name? Uh, Davis. Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. I've got a Davis on my T-sheet. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is say, guys, what time are you playing? 10 o'clock. Is it Mr. Davis? No, it's not, but I'm playing with Mr. Davis. It just saves that little bit of, oh, I haven't got this person on my T-sheet today. What are you gonna do with it? So simple as that, name or tea time. You get the guys or your team asking what, what time they're playing, I can then say, is it Mr. Davis or is it Mr. whatever, and that then allows me to then understand if I've got a in, uh, in a restaurant, are not necessarily golfers. So the hardest thing for them to talk about is golf because they might get asked a golfy question in reply. So what are you going to say, oh, what's your playoff? 36. Oh, well done, fantastic, that's brilliant, that is. I'm like, what? Do you, do you do any kind of education for your team to understand what, what good looks like? How many points you had out there today? Oh, oh yeah, I've had 38. Oh, that's not very good, is it? We all know that. Sometimes the engagement that you get from your team, pre-golf, what time are you playing? Just giving you my next slide. Rubbish. But engaging in conversation. Did you enjoy your day? We talked about where you're gonna get your feedback from. Anyone that walking into your restaurant say, are you enjoying it? You're having a nice day? Fantastic, great. Okay. Yeah, that's rubbish. Why? So how much time have you got in my environment to sell you something? Or to service you in a nice way? They're looking to buy something. They might hover around a little bit. And there's two types of customers walking into your shop. One that knows what they want. Oh, can I just have those probably ones better? Just need those probably ones. I know what I want, unless you're really rude and probably still gonna buy it from anyone. I know what I want. And then there's the other person that's got a bit of time on their hands. The lingerer. The wanderer, the meander, the browser. That oh my god, how am I going to approach that person over there? If Rob Maxfield was sitting here, I would tell you the first, because Rob employed me at the Belfry. I'm not the smallest person in the world. And I'm sitting there, ah, shop was probably this size. The customer over in the corner, he says, Matt, first week. Oh, what have we got? Bloody hell, mate. Go and speak to that customer over there, see if he's alright. What? So I've walked over, the customer's over there thinking, what's this numpty do? And I'm walking over, I'm like, you all right? Yeah, good, thanks. All right. I think I'm all right. Can I help you? 
in our experiences, and the 75%, and this is awful because this is, I'm not saying this is us in the room, but when I do some work with the year one, year two, and year three residential guys, it is them, and potentially newly qualified professionals. 75% were ignored. And that's awful. And what does that mean to a sale? 58% of all the people that were ignored chose not to make a